Namaskar, welcome to Late Edition. The Prime Minister, in his address to the 104th Science Congress, said that science must not be constrained. And he set a goal for India to be among the top three countries in science and technology by 2030. That's our focus tonight. First, let's listen to excerpts of the Prime Minister's speech in Tirupati. The Prime Minister asserted that the government is fully committed to supporting all streams of scientific knowledge, from fundamental science to applied science, with emphasis on innovations. My government is committed <coughs> to supporting different streams of scientific knowledge, ranging from fundamental science to applied science with emphasis on innovations. Well, he appreciated the role played by, the sci by science so far, but stressed that science and technology must meet the rising aspirations of the people and address the unique challenges of a vast and diverse country like India. We should develop a host of technologies based on efficient co-generation for clusters of villages and semi-urban areas. Can we find farmer-centric solutions to the problem of crop burning? Can we redesign our big cleans for reduced emissions and greater energy efficiency? Well, stressing on research and development, the Prime Minister said that public-private partnership model is being pursued where, and that will strengthen the innovation ecosystem. He said that India needs to address challenges for technological readiness and specifically mentioned rapid global rise of cyber-physical systems as one of the important areas that needs to be addressed. There is a need to develop and exploit these technologies in services and in manufacturing sectors, in agriculture, water, energy, traffic management, health environment, infrastructure, and geo-information systems, security, financial systems, and in combating crime. We need to develop an inter-ministerial national mission in the cyber-physical systems to secure our future by creation of basic R&D infrastructure, manpower and skills. Well, the Prime Minister also laid emphasis on ensuring ease of doing science as one of the priority areas of the government. Another empowering factor for scientific delivery is the ease of doing science. If we want science to deliver, we must not constrain building a strong science and technology infrastructure that is accessible to academia, startups, industry, and R&D labs is a priority for the government. And scientists at the Indian Science Congress were impressed with the Prime Minister's scientific approach to solving problems of the country. Our correspondent Philip Matthew talked to some prominent scientists there. I was very happy to hear him being so far thinking to realize that there's a wide range of important problems uh, in energy, science, and in medicine, and water, and so forth that, that are challenges and that science uh, will be one of the ways that we can address these problems. So uh, I, I think that's a, a very useful point of view. And, and in particular, he also recognizes the need to address uh, you know, the burning of lands and how that affects the air in India. Uh, so in, in, in many, many ways, I, I think he's a far-reaching and thinking uh, leader. I was impressed. He is very positive about science and technology. From the Prime Minister's speech, my takeaway is that India will be in the forefront of science and technology in the next one decade. I'm very impressed by the way he looked at the science and technology itself. 
Uh, it's not the glory of the science of technology of India, which it has. It has achieved a lot. It's a world-class science and technology. For what purpose? That's what he elaborated. He talks about disruptive universe, uh, technology and moving into reaching out to the people who have not been reached, how to get there, how to make it happen, how to make a society which is uh, shared together. So that way it's a fantastic thing that uh, one can define what the purpose of the whole science and technology is all about. So I was very, very impressed by his vision, by his uh, um, the wishes, by his future, by his future uh, predictions. And he said that in 2030, India will be the third in innovation and in science. And this really impressed me. Well, and uh, to discuss uh, the Prime Minister's speech and also uh, the 104th Science Congress, we have with us in the studio uh, Biman Basu, a senior scientist formerly with CISR, and N. Madhavan is a technology columnist and well-known expert on various scientific matters. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us. We'll start with you, uh, Mr. Biman Basu. Now, this is the 104th uh, such Science Congress, and one can ask the question as to, you know, what really has been achieved? from all these congresses? Well, you know, today the Indian Science Congress, the annual sessions of the Indian Science Congress, is the only scientific conference which is multidisciplinary. Right. Because in today we have all specialized conferences, you know, whether on genetics or, you know, in physics also, on uh, nuclear energy and so many things. But Indian Science Congress annual sessions, they are the only interdisciplinary conference where scientists from all disciplines can come and participate. And this also offers an opportunity to young scientists, you know, the students especially, mm -hmm. to meet and you know, exchange ideas with senior scientists and even Nobel laureates. Because they, they don't get this kind of opportunity anywhere else because the science college is not limited to any particular discipline sure. or category. And you know, about 14,000 scientists have joined this year also. Okay. So Fair that enough. way, I think it is unique. Uh, so, Mr. Madhavan, 14,000 scientists is quite a large pool uh, when they are exchanging ideas and, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a country which we are trying to, you know, scale up in terms of our R&D, uh, how important is our conferences like these, or these congresses, because, you know, even the President has been saying for a long time that our scientific institutions need to really uh, reach global standards. I think there are two important uh, things here. First is that what happens on stage, let's say where the Prime Minister spoke or the experts speak, is not, in my opinion, not as important as what probably happens off stage. You know, networking opportunities and uh, ways to exchange ideas and even inspirations are very critical in scientific progress because science is, you know, most scientists go back to their laboratories and sit in their little teams and huddles, but this is a chance of them to come out and see a larger world because applied science, now that's the second point I want to make. Mm -hmm. Applied science, you know, even our CSIR, this Council for Scientific Indu Industrial Research has entrepreneurship as one of the emphasis uh, areas in right. the vision for 2022. Entrepreneurship is about pulling things together from various disciplines and making uh, theoretical things come true in practice. Right. And these are the kind of meetings where you can call them as uh, brainstorming uh, opportunities or some things that create the conditions for future brainstorming and I, I think given the interdisciplinary focus and also uh, well right now uh, maybe we'll go later into the program sure. onto that there are also emerging areas of science which makes 20th century look like a picnic Fair enough, so fair enough. Uh, there's a lot to uh, okay. talk think over sure so let's look at uh, the sort of infrastructure for science uh, mr. Basu the Prime Minister spoke about creating a scientific social responsibility. I mean, uh, well, we can't all sit in our, uh, uh, or in our cocoons uh, or in our ivory towers. I'm talking about scientists, not uh, the general people. Uh, it has to, the science has to be applied to the needs of the common man. Also, uh, people have to understand it for, it, uh, for the technology to become useful. Uh, in this respect, you know, he, the Prime Minister talked of inculcating a connection of all institutions and all stakeholders. How is this, how, this, how, how can this be done? Uh, I mean, the internet is already there, isn't it? You see, this uh, interconnectivity, that is, the research that is being done in the labs, 
it has to be taken to the people and people have to be told about what is being done sure so that they can understand one thing and they can also expect what benefit they can get out of it now csr has been doing it in the past because it uh, you know propagates its uh, activities especially the research that is being done in the labs through popular science magazines and all that is one way of reaching mm. out to the people but it has also got you know uh, regional centers which specifically deal with regional problems for instance the laboratories that we have in northeast they deal with mostly the problems they face in northeast okay. Okay. they are not you know all india basis so sure. we have several such regional labs csir has several such regional labs which deal with the local problems and that way i think they are taking the research right to the fields uh mr madhavan you did mention in your last uh, answer about uh, you know we're living in an age where uh, technology is you know sort of uh, transformed a lot of things uh, and uh, the prime minister did mention something about cyber physical systems and uh, the fact that we need to re be prepared to utilize them uh, could you throw some light as to what actually he meant uh, and because okay we live in an era of the internet of things isn't mm. it yes that's right i think uh, good that you mentioned internet of things because cyber physical se uh, systems can be um, uh, called a more abstract and larger version of the internet of things uh, basically it's about software marrying machines to make things work you know we all know that software resides in computers but we also realize increasingly that we are entering the world of robotics drones and such like things and even automatic uh, manufacturing systems are controlled by computerized controls and internet makes it magnificently global by Uh, you know assigning internet addresses like your email ids even machines in the future or in the even the present increasingly will will have in the ip addresses or email ids or something like an email id which means that machines can talk to other machines using software sure. and you can automate the whole process and this can dramatically improve efficiency and uh, create new ways of uh, you know uh, manufacturing new ways of uh, Uh, weather monitoring new ways of forecasting right. everything is possible so what used to be called fly by wire in the uh, in the jet flying by pilots okay. will become common place even irrigation switches can today be turned on by cell phones so okay. you can see that there is a huge amount of of course i'm quoting uh, examples close to common man Absolutely. but what the prime minister spoke about is a very advanced interpretation of this because this is not just about what is going on and what will happen it's also about being prepared for the dramatic possibilities that cyber physical systems uh, imply okay. uh, both in terms of defense as sure. well as uh, creative potential so uh, uh, mr basu when we look at the theme for this year's event it's uh, science and technology for national development and when we look at national development in the context of uh, cyber physical systems and we specifically th think about you know what can actually do what it can do to transform uh, rural india rural development uh, what can we uh, really expect the prime minister was talking about crop burning you know certain issues like that reduced emissions no you see the, the physical cyber cyber physical systems as mr madhavan has just explained so they are already there to some extent right and they are you know uh, the scope is expanding but uh, the problems that we have to face for instance this uh, stubble burning that was a big problem this year especially in delhi now there are alternative ways of tackling with the waste because stubble is a waste of the cropland uh, once you harvest the crop what remains actually they are being burnt and that is not wanted true true so there are you know methods of uh, dealing with that particular waste in a different way but the information has to reach the farmers absolutely so there is a you know problem of reaching the information to the user and so that lab way, to land that's what they use the lab word lab to land and yeah. especially you know there are lots of things which are available but they don't reach the target audience in the sense when when needed and that creates the problem so okay. we have to sort out a, a way of connecting sure. these things so that whatever you know whatever is required at a particular point of time okay. is available instantly because you know as mr madhavan just said right. that internet is available everywhere now so we okay. can access information easily but one has to know how to access it and where to access it 
Uh, we're going to take a short commercial break at this point in time. When we come back, we look at the target that the Prime Minister has set to be among the top three countries in the world in science and technology by 2030. That's just 13 years from now. Stay with us. Ruksana, आज भी तुम अपना फॉर्म भरने पोस्ट ऑफिस नहीं आई आप तो जानते हैं शीला जी दानिश के अबू तो अब रहे नहीं बाहर के हर काम के लिए दूसरों के भरोसे रहना पड़ता है तो अब निकलो अल्पसंख्यक मंत्रालय के इस नई रोशनी योजना में तुम जैसे हजारों महिलाओं में नेतृत्व क्षमता को बढ़ाया जा रहा है आज की औरत अब घर से खुद बाहर आएगी और बनाएगी अपना जीवन बेहतर अल्पसंख्यक मंत्रालय की नई रोशनी योजना आपके लिए सीखें और सशक्त बने मदद हमारी मंजिल आपकी इन दिनों अपडेटेड रेज्यूमे रखना बेहद जरूरी है यस माइन प्रफुल कुमार मेजर प्रफुल कुमार पैरा स्पेशल फोर्सेस तीन साल हॉस्टाइल जोन में टफ था जे में स्पेशल सर्विस कुछ नए दोस्त बनाए कॉम्बैट फ्री फॉल स्पेशलिस्ट बलिदान के लिए तैयार जैसा आप देख सकते हैं आई वेयर माई हार्ट ऑन माई स्लीव एंड माई रेज ऑन माई यूनिफॉर्म विच आर दंपनी लेट्स यू डू दैट हम है भारत के सबसे एक्साइटिंग वर्क प्लेस और हम दे रहे हैं आपको एक ऑफर भारतीय सेना आम नहीं ये जिंदगी प्रधानमंत्री ग्राम सड़क योजना ने हम गांव वालों के लिए तरक्की के रास्ते खोल दिए सड़क के गड्ढों की फोटो खींच रहे हो कोई खास बात है क्या अरे काका मेरे मोबाइल फोन में मेरी सड़क ऐप है जिससे प्रधानमंत्री ग्राम सड़क से जुड़ी कोई भी जानकारी सरकार तक भेजी जा सकती है सड़क से जुड़े सुझाव या शिकायत पर सरकार वाजिब कार्यवाही करती है प्रधानमंत्री ग्राम सड़क से जुड़ी कोई भी बात मेरी सड़क एंड्रॉइड ऐप अब हर पल मेरे साथ क्या बताया डॉक्टर ने तुम्हारी बहू माँ बनने वाली है तूने डॉक्टर से पूछा कि लड़का है या लड़की लड़का हो या लड़की क्या फर्क पड़ता है पहले लड़की का अच्छा पालन पोषण करो शादी करो तो दहेज की चिंता अगर आपके पिताजी आप ही की तरह सोचते और आपको इस संसार में आने से रोक देते तो क्या आज हम यहाँ होते तूने मेरी आँखें खोल दी ला बहू मिठाई ला अब बेटा हो या बेटी मेरे लिए दोनों एक समान है जी मैं गैस कंपनी से आया हूँ गैस चूल्हा और पाइप चेक करने हैं आइए क्या आपको इस व्यक्ति से इसका पहचान पत्र नहीं मांगना चाहिए था मैडम पाइप से गैस लीक हो रही है तुरंत बदलना होगा वरना जानलेवा हादसा हो सकता है आप पाइप बदल देंगे पाँच सौ रूपए लगेंगे क्या आपको तसल्ली नहीं करनी चाहिए थी की आपकी गैस पाइप वाकई ही खराब है अपने चूल्हे गैस पाइप आदि की जाँच तथा सर्विस अपने ऑथोराइज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर ऐसी ही करवाए क्या बात है राशिद फर्स्ट डिवीजन में पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन करने के बाद भी तुम उदास हो लेकिन सर वो सोच रहे होंगे कि खर्चा कहाँ से आएगा हा? चिंता मत करो क्योंकि अब तुम्हारे साथ है मौलाना आजाद नेशनल फेलोशिप फेलोशिप हमारे लिए सर हाँ तुम्हारे लिए और अल्पसंख्यक समुदाय के उन स्टूडेंट्स के लिए जिनकी सालाना पारिवारिक आय ढाई लाख रूपए ऐसी कम है और जिन्होंने किसी भी सरकारी विश्वविद्यालय ऐसी जूनियर रिसर्च फेलोशिप या एम के लिए आवेदन दिया मदद हमारी मंजिल आपकी प्रधानमंत्री जीवन ज्योति बीमा योजना इस योजना के तहत सिर्फ एक रुपया प्रतिदिन जमा करने के हिसाब से आपको मिल सकता है दो लाख रुपए का जीवन बीमा आपके बाद आपके परिवार का जीवन बिना रुके चलता रहे इसलिए आज ही इस योजना से जुड़े वेलकम बैक वी आर डिस्कसिंग दी इंडियन साइंस कांग्रेस एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर एड्रेस टर्न टू मिस्टर माधवन टेक्नोलॉजी कॉलमनिस्ट एंड एक्सपर्ट So the Prime Minister set a target, uh, Mr. Madhavan, by 2030 that India should be amongst the top three scientific countries in the world. Uh, what really needs to be done to reach there? I think it's important to first to realize that we are already a good way there. You know, even 30, 40 years ago, it was said that India had the third largest scientific community in the world. Now we have grown our capabilities not only in the government sector, the public sector, but also uh, private sector. I mean, apart from the fact that you have something like between the technicians and scientists, the CSIR alone has 15,000 people, right. uh, or maybe 14,000 perhaps, and uh, you know, about nearly 500 patents of various kinds being filed every year. I'm just giving you the context so we know where we stand, okay. and we know that even the uh, uh, things like the almond milk that has become popular in the country has its origins in a CSIR lab. lab. So from uh, f because there was a shortage of baby food once, sure. uh, and uh, from there up to uh, National Informatics Center and the computer, uh, the Agni mil missile that has been fired so okay. far, we are really already getting there. 
Now the important thing now is India has to step up uh, two things. One is more commercially viable international patents Yes. Uh, and increase public private partnerships so that a lot of the innovation which is commercially more uh, paying sure. uh, is actually uh, taken outside because uh, the government systems are inherently limited okay. in some other ways. Sure. Uh, maybe we also need to refocus on uh, demystifying technology so that as the Prime Minister said, uh, something instead of scientists merely competing with their peers in the world, okay. they should also be uh, more focused towards what sure. can be done on the ground. Right. But this also means we need to uh, create systems and processes which means uh, apart from partnerships, we need innovations in, in incentives to uh, okay. uh, bring applied technology to the fore so that the whole thing can be scaled up in a sustainable commercial uh, right. way. The key word, uh, Mr. Basu, is commercial uh, because uh, a lot of the products we use are imported at the end of the day. We could actually be manufacturing a lot of these ourselves uh, in terms of uh, smartphones, in terms of scientific uh, goods that the common man uses. I mean, okay, we have missiles and we have sent rockets into space and things like that, which are great achievements. Uh, we could actually also build our own airplanes. Uh, we have uh, the light combat aircraft. Uh, there are a lot of things that we could do which could scale up and, you know, put us right there at the top. What really needs to be done in, the, in that respect? You see, you have just uh, talked about uh, smartphones and all those things. See, there is this question of scale. Right. See, India cannot go in for manufacturing chips right now because you know, it has to be manufactured at a, such a large scale that unless there is demand, it's, it will not be worthwhile to set up a plant to manufacture uh, uh, these chips. Similarly, you know, whatever technology is available at a very uh, you know, low price from abroad, no user in India is willing to buy it if it is expensive and Indian technology. So that way there is a limitation at the moment, but as uh, Mr. Madhavan just said, you know, if we focus our attention to areas where right. we don't have foreign technology, you know, there are a lot of rural technology developed by CSIR, which is finding a lot of use in India. Okay. But again, the question is whether they are commercially viable, commercially in the sense whether they can give that much of return right. in, 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 uh, in you know, mass production. In mass production. So those things have to be looked into because, you know, India is a vast country and our requirement is very large okay. in certain areas because we have problems which Western countries don't have. Sure. And we have to tackle those problems using science and technology. Okay. And institutions sure. like CSIR has been working sure. in this direction for we, a long we, time. True. We, we seem we to be can. running short of time, but uh, Mr. Madhavan, uh, science itself has created a demand uh, for a lot of products. Can science supply you know that demand i mean our own scientists our own uh, uh, you know technology skills mm. our own manufacturing our own institutions iits let's say mm. uh, because uh, at the end of the day you know a lot of the, what's always mentioned at many of these congresses that our scientists go abroad and they excel uh, mm. but of course they do excel here no, too good, good that's that the you point. answered uh, asked yeah. the question because i think it's very important to understand that for about four decades or more India's science was highly dominated by the government and also not commercially linked proper, although there are great companies such as Rand Baxi coming out of research work done in uh, central labs. But things are changing fast because there is a new, uh, new emerging areas are there. Everything from robotics to artificial intelligence to genomics, there are new possibilities opening up and there's no reason why India should not jump into the forefront of this because we have now many more universities, a much more better fed and better read population, young population, 25%. Right. or other 50% below the age of 30. They can also be groomed for this. And most important of all, we now have an entrepreneurial culture which is uh, driven by venture capital and right. programs like Absolutely. Startup India and Digital Absolutely. India, which should uh, give us more encouragement to, uh, okay. you know, uh, viable programs and companies sure. that in turn will generate the cash flows for a further sure. scalability of right. these things. We've run absolutely short of time. Last word from you, uh, Mr. Basu. You know that final push that we probably require. What is it, you know, for this young population to take our country forward? Seems that, uh, do you, are you optimistic after listening to what Mr. Madhavan has just said? No, I'm optimistic because, you know, the younger generation today, they are definitely, you know, uh, eager to go ahead and 
the way they are adapting uh, themselves to the new technology and all, given proper opportunity, because most okay. important thing is the opportunity, you know. Sure. If given right. proper opportunity, I think uh, there is no uh, no uh, doubt that we can definitely go ahead and by 2030 we can become the th uh, right. no, one of the three top science uh, countries in the world. So the ecosystem is in place. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us on this special show, Late Edition. Well, moving on, uh, the Prime Minister also said that uh, research needed to be strengthened in line with international standards, and it is the second time, in fact, that Tirupati is hosting this Indian Science Congress, the first being in 1983, and that was the 70th edition. It was held there. The Prime Minister raised the issue of scientific social responsibility to connect our leading institutions to all stakeholders including schools and colleges, raising research to global standards and translating that knowledge into innovations, startups and industry will help us achieve inclusive and sustainable growth, is what he said. Thanks very much for watching. Namaskar.